Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to Simply Home and Harvest. If you're new here, my name is Jen and on this channel you'll find all the things home and garden, simple recipes and ideas, some DIY projects and just some stuff to help you around your home and garden. Today we are going to make an ice cream cake and I don't know how it's been where you live but here it has been super hot and I was trying to think of something that I could fix. Um, actually tomorrow is Father's Day so we're having my parents and family over for Father's Day and I was thinking of a dessert that maybe I could fix and I thought ice cream cake would be perfect plus we've got 4th of July coming up and I think it is the absolute perfect dessert to make for the 4th so it will give you maybe some time hopefully I can get this video out and it'll give you some time to uh, get the ingredients and prepare this for your 4th of July event so that's what we're going to do today. I'm also going to take you around my house and show you some of my favorite little nooks and crannies that I have decorated for the 4th of July. And maybe that will give you some ideas of how you can make your home more festive for this time of year. So there are lots of variations uh, to this ice cream cake. You can make it several different ways as far as what you decide to put in it and the flavors. But today we are going to make it simple. I promise you this is an easy recipe. It's very simple. You have to work fast though because you are dealing with ice cream. But if it melts a little, it's okay. We're going to put it in the freezer and it'll firm right up. Um, but today we are just going to do just the good old fashioned vanilla ice cream sandwiches they make ice cream sandwiches in many different flavors and if you want to spice it up you can choose a different flavor ice cream sandwich but today we're just going to go with just good old vanilla ice cream sandwiches and then all you need that's uh, 24 that's just three ingredients you'll need whipped topping today we're going to use store-bought i do um occasionally make my own whipped topping which you can do that works good too and then we're just going to use a chocolate sauce you can find this um, over near where your ice cream supplies are in the grocery store so that's what we're going to use today you do need fudge sauce not the chocolate syrup i think the fudge sauce works much better so we're going to put that all together and then you can decorate the top of it and make it festive for whatever occasion that you're going to prepare it for what i did forget to mention is that you will need to use a freezer safe dish to put um, your ice cream cake in. Now you can use the disposable aluminum foil throwaway uh, containers. They work perfect. That way you don't have any cleanup afterwards, especially if you're going to take it somewhere. That might be the best option. But today this is what we're going to use. This is just a, a piece of stoneware and um, it has, I've used it before and it, it does a pretty good job of holding the temperature in and um, helping it to stay frozen longer. First thing we're gonna do is the hardest part. I promise, this is the absolute hardest part of this recipe and it is unwrapping all of the ice cream sandwiches. And if I had my kids around, I would see if I could talk them into doing this part. They're a little bit older now, so helping out in the kitchen to them is not as fun as it probably used to be when they were younger. So this is the hardest part, but we're gonna knock it out as quickly as we can. So you can see this is the first layer and I do have to cut some of the ice cream sandwiches to get them to fit in the corners. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is put our fudge sauce on top. I do heat it up in the microwave just a tad just to make it a little easier to spread. Then we're going to put another layer of ice cream sandwiches on top 
Then the last thing we're gonna do is add our whipped topping and then we'll decorate the top, add a little chocolate syrup, pop it in the freezer, let it firm up. Um, you can let that happen overnight or for a few hours. And then when you bring this out, everybody is going to think that you spent hours perfecting this beautiful cake, especially when you cut into it, you see all the layers and you are gonna know the secret that not only was it easy, but it was quick. Well, we used 23 out of 24 ice cream sandwiches, so that means there's one left over to have myself a little treat. So I've made ice cream sandwiches for a long time, but I don't think I've ever had this problem before. And the problem is that the whipped topping was in the freezer and it's still a little bit frozen. So I've got a fork and I'm just working through the frozen pieces some before I spread it and it's, it's working just fine. So if that happens to you, don't worry. Just get out a fork and you can break up those pieces and then get that spread on there. So here's the fun part. Now you can decorate your cake when you take it out of the freezer, but you can also decorate it before. Um, you just, I guess you wanna be careful when you put your aluminum foil over the top or plastic wrap over the top before you put it in the freezer not to mess up your decoration. So that's completely up to you. And if I were doing this for the 4th of July, which I was intending to get red and white sprinkles or something festive, but the one place I went, I could not find what I was looking for. Uh, so you could put any color sprinkles on to fit your occasion. You could put red, white, and blue sprinkles. Um, we could have even gotten like the red, white, and blue M&Ms and maybe even made a flag on top of it. That would be fun. But today, I know that the people in my family love caramel, chocolate, and peanut mixture and so we're just gonna make the top of this look like a snicker bar Hope you will try this recipe out. It really is very simple to make and delicious. But right now we're gonna get it in the freezer so that it doesn't sit here and just turn into a pool of chocolatey goodness. And then tomorrow we'll pull it out and enjoy it. And it'll be one less thing we have to worry about tomorrow on the big day. So I was cleaning up this mess, y'all. And there's just a little bit left down in this chocolate fudge jar. And I had a few of the crushed peanuts left. 
that it news. And I was just thinking, what if we, oh yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. I gotta make sure it is serrated on the edge so I don't cut myself. But forget the leftover ice cream sandwich. This is where it's at. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These containers, y'all, don't throw these away. In the South, we call this Tupperware. <laughs> but seriously, they make really good uh, leftover or to-go containers. In fact, my mom comes to every occasion with a bag full of these because she knows what's up. Keep these. All right, y'all, so while I was rinsing this out, I got to thinking I don't want to offend anybody who has Tupperware because I have Tupperware. I love Tupperware. This is not comparable to Tupperware, so I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to compare this plastic whip topping container to Tupperware, I'm not. But I'm just saying that when you send leftovers home with somebody in this and it doesn't come back, it's okay. If you send leftovers home in your good Tupperware and it doesn't come back, it hurts your feelings. So keep these. That's what I was saying. Okay, we're good. Thank you, good mom. Is it good, honey? It's busting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a compliment, thanks. This slow cooker cracked chicken is one of my favorite recipes to make. My family really likes it and it's just an easy go-to for a family gathering or having some friends over. It's really quick to pull together. First off, you need three pounds of chicken breast. You just layer that in the bottom of your slow cooker. And then to that, we're gonna add two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese. And all you have to do is just lay those right on top of your chicken breast. Next, you're gonna add in two packets of ranch seasoning mix. Next, we're gonna set our slow cooker on high for four hours. Now, you can either cook this on high for three to four hours or low for six to eight. All right, our chicken has cooked for four hours, and now we need to shred it up. My husband jumped in there and used our little handy shredding tool to get in there and shred the chicken up really good for us. Uh, we want to do that step before adding the bacon, so you just get that shredded real good. You could also use a couple of forks. It's pretty tender at this point, and will start to pull apart rather easily. So we're going to go ahead and get all of that shredded up. At this point, it was smelling amazing and everybody was super hungry. So he was very motivated to jump in there and help me get that finished up so that we could uh, hurry up and eat. He really did a fantastic job of getting all of that chicken shredded for us. So the next thing we want to do is add our bacon pieces and you can cook and crumble up bacon to add, but... Today was about getting it on the table, and so we took the shortcut and had some already cooked bacon pieces that we added. So we added two packs, or maybe it was just a pack and a half, it looks like, of the bacon pieces. And we just got that all incorporated together and mixed together, and then it was ready to eat. Now you can serve this on a bun with a little lettuce, tomato, we even like to add coleslaw, and you can also serve it just by itself. thought I'd start out with this little nook in our kitchen Now you've seen this probably in the background of a lot of my videos and I just kept it very simple I love my little live simply sign it stays out year-round and to it I just added what I already had on hand in our kitchen and I had some really pretty measuring cups and a mixing bowl these are from the pioneer woman collection and I had that was gifted to me so I just set those on my tear tray I also have a little barn that stays out year round and you'll see I think that's a jar of strawberry jam in the background but then um, right there 
beside of it, I've got my sugar uh, canister and a canister that holds uh, our iced tea packets. And then also you'll see the flower jar. That was another idea that I got from a fellow YouTuber was to use some of your um, decorative measuring cups in your clear flower jars and you can switch them out for the seasons I thought that was a neat idea so that's one from the Pioneer Woman collection and I just love the colors those are the colors that I wanted to go for for my summer decor and so I thought that just worked perfectly so don't think you have to go out and spend a lot of money use what you have in your kitchen and use that to just incorporate into your decor and you'll be surprised at what a jar of jam or a basket or some cookbooks can do for your space now these are cookbooks that I have out um, just about year-round because I use them so often they're some of my favorites so they like to they stay up on the shelf it's a very convenient spot for them and then I've just got a couple little baskets up there one of those baskets we use to hold plastic wear when we have um, family gatherings or friends over and then that basket in the back corner is one that I've had for a very long time. It was handmade and just I, I keep it out year round. The star is from the Better Homes collection at Walmart. Now this is one of my favorite spaces in our home to decorate for every season. I just love these shelves. They were built using some old closet board that came out of a room that we refinished. And my husband took them, cut them, uh, stained them to match back to the piece of furniture that's down below that is our coffee bar. And I just love the way it turned out. Uh, this flameless barn lantern is a piece that I've had for a couple of years that came from QVC. It's part of Valerie Parhill's collection and it just goes perfectly with my decor. And then the sign, the God Bless America sign, came from Marshall's last season. Uh, the basket behind it came from Hobby Lobby. It was part of this season's spring collection. And then this little barn with the rooster on top, I think that came from Hobby Lobby years ago. And the garland, I believe, is another Hobby Lobby find. You'll probably hear Hobby Lobby mentioned a lot. It is one of my favorite places. I always say if I'm not at home, I'm probably at Hobby Lobby. Um, but they just have some of the best things. Down below that, I've got the sweet little barn light. It's actually a melt warmer, a wax melt warmer. And I don't think I'm using it for that right now, but it's a nice little night light if it's not that. Uh, and then right beside it, I've got an old Coke bottle and just some flags that I set down in that to make it a little bit more festive. Um, this star is another piece of decoration that stays out almost year round. I love it. It was gifted to me from a friend who got it in Pennsylvania. I've, in fact, a lot of the inspiration for my decorations comes from the Amish country. It's where I vacationed just about every year as a child. It's where my parents still vacation. In fact, the little flameless candle that you see there was picked up just last week 
on one of their recent trips to uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania in the Amish country. So that's a very special piece. And then it's sitting atop uh, a little stack of wooden books that came from Marshalls last year. The boxes you see there are from Kirkland's. I got those many, many years ago. And then you should probably recognize those jars of strawberry jam. We made those together a few videos back. And that's just something else. You know, you can pull out what you already have to use as your decorations. I thought it was just such a sweet touch. You'll find me in this area most mornings enjoying a cup of coffee. This is where our Keurig is. And right now it's cleaned up quite a bit. but. Normally we have a lot of coffee sitting out, coffee mugs. This is a tiered tray that I picked up. I believe it was also from Hobby Lobby. And you'll see I've just got my creamer and my sugar um, containers staying there. I've got a flag in there. The napkins in the background with the blue truck are from Dollar General. And the little star in the front is from Walmart. And then down below, I've got a little star trivet um, that I've had for several years. A little container that holds um, some of our herbal teas. And then the cookies, I picked those up actually at Dollar General, believe it or not. I thought they were so festive. And I just brought them home, wrapped them in plastic, and um, I told my kids after this video they can eat them. And then this is a house that uh, was actually made by a friend of mine's, mine's dad, and it's been painted a couple of times, but we got it um, right about the time that we moved into this house, so we've had it about 21 or 22 years. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces, and just recently I painted it white with the black roof, and I love it. This area is also one of my favorites to decorate, and this is probably my favorite piece of furniture in our house. It actually belonged to my grandparents, and when they passed on, it was passed on to me. This held the desserts every family gathering that we ever had at my grandparents' house, and when we have family gatherings here, that's exactly what we use it for. A few years ago, I got brave enough to refinish it, and painted it white, distressed it a little bit, changed the hardware on it, but I kept the top, the original um, wood finish, and I just love how it turned out. But I've just got a few little festive touches on it. This is a little uh, Liberty sign that I've had for a long time. The greenery came from Target, and the stars are actually Christmas decorations that I pulled back out. That's another tip for you for the 4th of July. Can pull out some of your Christmas decorations because we decorate with a lot of stars, a lot of red for Christmas, and so you can incorporate some of that into your uh, summer seasonal decor. In this picture frame, I just use it just about every season and change out what's inside. And this is one that I printed off the computer. It says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And it's a scripture from Galatians chapter 5. And then this is just a little piece of history. I like to pull this out every year. I also printed it out and put it in this little frame. And it holds the preamble of the United States Constitution. 
And so I like having that since we're celebrating the birthday of our country. That just gives us a nod back to where it all began. So that's really special for us to have out so that we can remember where our country began. And then this beautiful vase came from Target. I just added the Americana ribbon to it that came from Hobby Lobby and the geraniums inside look very real. I thought they were probably the most realistic geraniums I had ever seen and they came from Belk. I love this sign. It was a gift from my cousin for Christmas and I think it's just a perfect little welcome to our home. I've got a mason jar beside it with some fairy lights and a couple of flags. This shelf I just redid uh, just recently. It used to be an old cherry wood. I refinished it by painting it white and distressing it. It actually came from the Hallman Garden Collection years ago. It's part of their Amish collection. And this rocking chair belonged to my great, great grandfather. I was told that he used to sit in it every evening and smoke his pipe. So it's rich in history and very special to me. The pillow in it came from Hobby Lobby and the sign, the America sign, I've had that for so long that I cannot remember where it came from, but I pull it out every year and I thought that was a nice little place to hang it this year. This is our seasonal tree. We keep this up year round and we change it out for the seasons. And it's just something that's become very special in our house. The topper is a barn topper that my mom got me for Christmas. I think it came from the LTD catalog and I have used it on many of my trees this year. I just love it. I love that farmhouse touch. So you'll see some farm animals even on our uh, summer Americana tree, but a lot of the ornaments that you see there are from, you guessed it, Hobby Lobby. Uh, the stars, the star ornaments are from Hobby Lobby. The red glittery stars, I actually pulled them out of Christmas decor, so that's another thing that we can reuse there. The flags um, that you see all over probably came from Hobby Lobby. This little ornament I've had for several years, I picked that up at a craft festival and I just loved it. It was just so warm and cozy. Um, I think several of my family members have that same little ornament. And um, I just I, I love to add it anywhere that I can. Um, the little barn ornaments that you see, the wooden ones, they came from Dollar General this year. And I don't know if I got a close-up to what they say, but they have the cutest little sayings on them. And I just thought they tied in perfectly. Uh, the ribbon came from Hobby Lobby and the large uh, deck light bulbs, um, those are like the outdoor light bulbs that you see there, they came from Dollar General. The truck came from QVC a few years ago, it's also part of the Valerie Park Hill collection. It stays out year round, I love pulling it out, I normally have it filled with whatever um, season it is, I have snowballs in it sometimes or bales of hay, um, so this season it's holding an American flag. Now I wanted to keep this area simple since we have so much going on with the tree right beside it. That This is a sign that I made using my Cricut and I've got a little bit of greenery around it and then this little house and the star came from Walmart. It's sitting on top of an old Webster's dictionary that actually belonged to my dad and his brothers and sisters when they were growing up. I absolutely love anything old and vintage that I could add to my decorations and if it has a story to it even better so these books are really neat to have I've got several of them that I use for decoration I hope that you and your family have a wonderful 4th of July holiday and that you are able to spend it with the people that you love the most 
We are so blessed to live in this great country with freedoms that we should never take for granted. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying these videos, I hope you'll consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye for now, friends.